Hi everybody, it's Sandy and welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm going to show you today how to color a little white fuzzy bear. And we're going to do that with Copic markers. And I'm also going to use some glitter <gasps> on this card. Oh my gosh. Let's get started. This is a new stamp from Purple Onion and I'm going to color him with grays. And I went to my hex chart and this is page two of the hex chart. And I'm going to use the warm grays because I'm going to give him sort of a brown feel to him. And he's just really absolutely adorable. So I'm going to start by coloring the gray. The way I see a lot of people color it, you know, if you're going to color something that looks white, you think, oh, I've got to use really light colors and hardly use anything in them. And I'm going to show you that you can get a lot of contrast and still have your critter look like he's kind of on the whitish side. This one's going to look a little bit on the dirty white side just because he's going to have some color in him. But I think you're going to be really pleased to see these results and how it develops over time. So I'm blending my W2 with the W00 just to soften it all out. And he looks like he has a little bit of dimension. You can see a little bit of roundness there and that's all well and good. But real contrast is going to really make a huge difference with it. Sometimes you can put some color around it, whether it's making a background or whatever. I'm going to start by adding color. I went to my hex chart for the color of the the little stick that he's holding, the flag stick, flagpole, and picked a brown for that. And you can already see, in contrast to that, he's starting to look lighter. But I'm going to pick a nice light pink, the R20, for the ears, because I didn't want something that was going to be really super dark. And then I went to my collection of original markers. Those are the ones with this bullet nib, the square bodied ones because then I can get into all those little lines and color in the little bows around their necks. And I like having some of these original markers in my collection for that. I decided to go for the end markers and neutrals for the hats because I wanted the hats to look like a little different color than our little bears. And those are made of newsprint. So I'm going to use two different colors on the left and right side to give the hat some illusion of shading as well as the illusion of some newsprint pattern. So I'm just doing some little hash lines and and um, on both of the, the little bear hat and the big bear hat. The little bear is just really hard to get detail into, but you know, it is what it is because he's a little teeny tiny bear. And I'm using a lighter color for the newsprint on the right hand side because if I'd used the same color, his whole hat would look like it's the same, same thing. Then I wanted to add a little bit again to our little tiny bear. And then I wanted to really start adding some serious contrast. So I grabbed my <gasps> N7 marker and I added some real serious shadows in a few spots. And then I'm going to blend some of that out and soften it with my N3, which is something that is just going to knock back all of that detail because I don't want the hat to be the focus. I'm going to want the bear to be the focus. So this will just soften some of that, that little text that's on the newsprint. So then I wanted to add a little contrast also to the ties. So I went to my B26 and I'm using just the very, very tip of the marker because I'm trying to get in those tiny spots and I don't have this color in an original marker. And now we're going to start working on the bear. So we used, a, remember, a W00 and a W2. So I'm going to step it up two, two numbers and go to a W4. That line under the hat is a varied distance from it, you know, there, you can see it's a little thicker right in that point because that's going to add a little bit so that it looks like that point is sticking out in front of him. And then I'm leaving a little bit of a white outside and I'm, I'm just kind of making the shadow a little bit inside from the edge of the stamp to create some bounced light on the outside of him. And it's just going to add a little bit of extra interest. And you can see already with the W4, I'm starting to get some really nice contrast. Got some really strong shadows in here. And then I'm going to step back down to the W2. And then I can add little lines or even just some, some quick brush strokes to soften some of those areas where the W4 is at and add a little bit more depth to it. And I can extend it a little bit further so that uh, those shadows continue all the way in an arc around his face and smooth out that stuff around above his nose. If you put shadows above that nose section, it'll just make it look like that part recedes and his nose pops out toward the front. So just add some extra dimension. And I'm adding a little bit of kind of 
fur around his eyes. If you look at a teddy bear, you can see that the fur goes certain directions and that'll help you to figure out where to put your marker strokes and what direction to make the little lines. But again, I'm trying to use just the tip of the marker, just barely touching the surface of the paper so that I can get really tiny lines. This video is sped up about one and a half times, so it's not full speed, but it's also not like quadruple time or anything like my videos sometimes are. So you're getting a semi-realistic, just a little faster than normal view of how fast I do this. So remember we use it W00, W2, and W4, and now I'm adding just a little bit of the W6. You can stop before you get to this. Don't, don't let me freak you out and scare you, but I want you to see the difference that the W6 can make. And who in their right mind would ever think you'd color a white bear and start with a W6? But, you know, when I'm doing this kind of a thing, I usually do start lighter and work my way darker because I'm not always sure how far I want to go. And if you start with your W6, you might feel like you're, you know, you need to put more in than, than you really ought to. And doing it this way helps me to just put in a tiny bit. So now I'm going to take that W4 and I'm going to add more to uh, to blend that W6 back in toward the fur and I'm just drawing a little more fur lines and giving him a little more fuzziness and softening a lot of that out a little bit more. I'm going to draw his mouth back in. I drew it in with a little lighter color before and you can just keep kind of working at it as I go through all these different markers. And I am leaving them uncapped just off to the surface, off to the side of where I'm working so I can zip back and forth between the colors. They're not going to Markers are not going to dry out. So I'm just going to take my W2 and I'm going to soften everything, just add a little bit of that soft color. And then if you get too much, then you can go in with a zero marker or a, your W00. And I'm going with W00 because I'm just going to color over everything and give him kind of an overall very light gray, except for on that top part of his nose. And like I'm going to leave just that part and then the top of his arm and that sort of thing. And now I can go in with the a really nice dark W8. I mean, you could keep doing this until you get to black, but I'm going to stop at the W8. This is going to be as dark as I'm going to go. And uh, might even lighten a few areas as we go. You never, you never really know because until I sort of see it done and see it all in context, I'm never quite sure how far I'm going to push it. So here I decided to go back in and do a little bit more with the W4 to increase that mouth. I don't want it full black because the that one corner of his mouth was drawn into the stamp and I don't want to take away the cuteness of having just one corner there. The little guy, I'm just gonna zip through him really quick. He doesn't get nearly as much color just because he's so tiny, you can't get that many layers of color in there. I'm gonna use W4 and W2 for the ground for the shadows and a lot of people, like, you feel uncomfortable with the W4 doing these light, long strokes, but I, I like the darker colors. You could do a W2 and a W00, no problem. I'm going to trim out the flag. That's why I haven't colored it yet. So I'm using my finger knife, which is a really awesome tool to have in your craft drawer. And I'm cutting it out and tracing it onto a backer piece of paper that I'm gonna put behind it. And I'm gonna color the American flag just really loosely. And I'm just doing shapes. I'm not even gonna do all the little stars in there. And you can put any flag in here. I love that, that they've designed this so that any country flag can be drawn in here. And I'm drawing it bigger than that little window that I drew. And I'm going to take a piece of score sheet. This is like score tape, but it's score sheet instead. Press it down and peel off that backer. And now I have a sticky surface. And all I have to do is take some glitter. And I can dump that on there and close it up so I don't make a glitter mess everywhere. I have scratch paper under it. And I'm just gonna press it into the score tape. Now there's all kinds of videos you can look up on how to do this. You can color over top of it with markers, all different kinds of things. I just wanted a really quick look of glitter. So I'm gonna clean that off, clean my hands. And even now you can see that I, I didn't press it in well enough so it does have glitter that comes off. So I'm going to seal it all in on this backer sheet by putting some score tape all the way around all four sides and put a piece of plastic from some packaging over top of it. Super easy and it's going to just stick there and now I have a little window that I have um, my little flag showing through. Next step, I'm just going to use my 
rectangle dies, my stitch rectangle dies from Simon Says. Die cut that guy, look how fast I am. And then I trimmed this backer layer so it fits the right size to place this on top. I put my adhesive on the back of the image that I've colored so it'll stick to that plastic. Then I stamped a purple onion sentiment, cheers. I stamped it and cut it in a sort of a swirly manner and wrapped it around a star. I'll put a power tab on the back so I get a little bit of dimension on the card. So I'm just going to stick my little star on there. And then I um, cut out a couple of other tiny stars and I was going to add those as well because I just wanted a little bit of festive look around the, the corner of the card. And I also had a fingerprint there that I was covering up. So <laughs> there you go. There's my finished card, which is a whole heck of a lot of fun with a little glittery flag in there. And I would recommend that you always try to seal in any glitter. Whether you're doing Operation Right Home cards or not, even though Operation Right Home is ending August 1st, you have to have all your cards in by then, your friends may not appreciate getting glitter all over them when they open their cards. So there's tons of techniques for how you can seal in glitter. This is just one of many. And I hope you will take advantage of watching this video because this one is a little crazy one that I made many years ago and it's just kind of hilarious and I thought you might enjoy it. So have a really great uh, Memorial Day weekend. Remember that it's not all about the barbecues and the mattress sales. It's about our service members who have given their all for our country and we want to remember them and give them their due respect. All right. Happy Memorial Day. Talk to you guys later. Bye.